Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about RDD in Apache Spark. Whenever we hear the term Spark, we always hear other term called RDD. It stands for Resilient Distributed Dataset. Let's understand what it actually means. We are not going to create RDD in today's session. We will be doing it in the upcoming sessions. Do watch this video until the end so that you understand RDD concept very clearly. Let's assume that we have some data present in the file data.txt and the size of this file be 200 MB. This data is something that we would like to process using Spark. In order to process this data present in the file using Spark, we need to create an RDD on top of this data. This RDD in simple programming language terms will be an object. If we think about Scala, Java, or Python, this RDD is called an object in the programming language. Let us take the example of Scala, and in order to create this object in Scala, we write this one liner code. I am naming my object as source RDD. So, this source RDD is an object in Scala, and this source RDD is an RDD in terms of Spark. To understand this concept of RDD very clearly, let us assume that we have this data stored in Hadoop distributed file system. Let us assume that these are the four nodes in our Hadoop distributed file system N1, N2, N3, and N4. And the default block size in Hadoop distributed file system HDFS is 128 MB. And the data file that we have with us is of 200 MB. So, this data file to be stored in HDFS, it will be split into blocks of 128 MB. One block will be of 120 MB size, and we don't have 128 MB more. That's why the remaining amount of memory will be stored in the other block, which is 72 MB. So, there will be two blocks B0 and B1 that are stored in HDFS for this data file data.txt. And let us assume that B0 is stored in N1 and B1 is stored in N2. In HDFS, we also have a concept called data replication. So based on the replication factor, the data block will be stored in multiple places or multiple replicas. So let us assume that the replication factor is 3 in case of our HDFS. As the replication factor is 3, there will be 3 copies of B0 present. As the first copy is in N1 already, let the second copy be in N2 and third copy is in N4. And the same logic applies for B1 as well. Let the second copy of B1 be in N3 and third copy in N4. So now we have three copies of B0 and B1 in four different nodes in our HDFS cluster. And we know that Spark does in memory computation. In memory computation, in the sense, whatever the data that is present in the disk, so this is the data that is present in the disk, this data will be brought into memory of Spark. Any operation on top of the data will be happening in memory. So let us assume that th this is the RAM of node N1 and this is the RAM of node N2. In Spark, in order to work with data.txt, we need to read the blocks B0 and B1 and this data will be brought inside the RAM of the node and then Spark will operate on top of the data that is present in memory. Now we understand what we have in HDFS, right? Now we have our source already here. When we execute this line of code, the source already equals sc.txt file on data.txt. When we execute this line of code, Spark will create a lineage. It means, so it has B0 and B1 blocks. So we need to read the data from data.txt file and it will create a lineage. So we need to call it as source RDD. So this lineage, this information will be created by Spark when we execute this line one. So Spark will not do anything on top of the data that is present here. It will just create this lineage. And then in the next step, we want to do some operation on top of this source RDD. Like we want to do a transformation. We want to filter the data. Let us call it as filtered RDD. And filtered RDD is we need to apply filter on the data that is present in source RDD. So we apply some lambda function inside here to the filter logic. 
and what spark does after executing this line of code is that it will create lineage linking to source rdd like it will link the source rdd and it will tell that filtered rdd is coming from source rdd so this lineage is created by spark this lineage is created by spark until now and then we wanted to create a final rdd filtered rdd and we do some map operation on top of this filtered rdd right we write some function here to perform map on the final rdd so this is our final rdd so what spark does after calling this function is that spark will again increase the lineage so it will tell that final rdd is created on top of filtered rdd so this lineage is called dag in spark directed acyclic graph so it cannot form any cycles like this it cannot link back so it is directed acyclic graph in spark why spark has created this directed acyclic graph instead of doing something on top of data is that spark will follow something called lazy evaluation so whenever we write some transformations on top of rdds rdds are evaluated in a lazy fashion which means that until we call an action on top of an rdd rdds will not get evaluated what this action me action means is that so we have our final rdd right on top of this final rdd if we call collect collect is an action in spark if we call collect spark will look for this final rdd in the lineage so this is our lineage and spark has found that final rdd is present here and, and in order to form final rdd we need filter rdd and in order to create this filter rdd we need source rdd and for source source rdd we need blocks b0 and b1 so spark will go to the our cluster and it will find blocks b0 and b1 and it will read the blocks b0 and b1 into the memory like it has read b0 and it it has put this b0 in memory and it will read b1 and put this b1 in memory so these two rdds that are in memory these are called our source rdds so source rdd is now available in memory so the next step is to create this filtered rdd so spark now will read the data from these two in memory places like it will read the source rdd and it will create one more block called filtered rdd in memory and the next step is to find the final rdd spark will again read this rdd which is our filtered rdd and create the next block which is our final rdd so let our ram be 128 gb or something so this 128 mb file which are b1 and b2 will not be of much burden to store in the ram of this mission we have this multiple rdd stored in the ram of the mission like that's why we call spark as in memory computing processing engine so whenever we use spark and we write our code in terms of rdd spark will first read the data into memory and it will create an rdd in ram and the subsequent actions will be performed on top of that rdd by creating the next level rdds if required so now you would have got a doubt that why spark is creating multiple rdds instead of editing the same rdd spark has one more feature called immutability so rdds in spark are immutable which means that rdd once created it cannot be modified rdds are read only objects in spark so rdds cannot be modified in case you need to modify that rdd you should read the rdd and do the modification and create one more rdd on top of it so that is how rdd in spark works let us understand the meaning of r and d so resilient and distributed let us understand distributed first so the rdds are created in multiple nodes so this data that is related to b0 the rdd is created a part part of rdd is there in ram of node n1 and the part of rdd is present in ram of node n2 that's how the rdds in spark are distributed across the cluster like rdd cannot stay in a single block so rdds will be present in distributed fashion and there will be parallel processing happening on top of this rdds that's the meaning of distributed and resilient so the resilient means that rdds are fault tolerant let us say in the ram of this mission multiple rdds are created and due to some reason and there will be many operations that are happening on the ram of this mission due to some reason this rdd is lost 
when spark wanted to use this rdd final rdd or filter rdd if this rdd is not present in the ram of this mission spark has this dag right spark has this dag which has the lineage information of all the rdds so it is capable of going back and recreating this rdds so we need filter rdd which is built from source rdd so if filter rdd is lost from the memory so it will look at the source rdd if source rdd is present already it will create filter rdd out of this source rdd so that's how rdds are fault tolerant in spark to keep the long story start shorter rdd tracks data lineage information to recover lost data automatically on failure which is called fault tolerance and resilience in and there are some drawbacks or limitations of rdds which are like rdd code can be sometimes opaque and developers might struggle to find out what exactly the code is trying to compute and the other other limitation is that rdds are not optimized by spark because spark cannot really understand what is inside the lambda functions like we have a filter function here spark doesn't understand what's inside this filter function when we write code using rdd developer has to take care of all the performance optimizations and in order to overcome this limitations spark provides other apis called data frames and data sets so when we code using the data frames and data sets spark will take care of the optimizations we will discuss more about data frames and data sets in the upcoming sessions so that's all for this session see you in the upcoming session